What is up, everybody? It is Jamie Shaw here on the Absolute Basketball Experience. And today's guest, we are talking to Desmond Bain, TCU graduate and NBA draft uh, hopeful, as he goes through this process of the NBA draft. Uh, we talk about his time at TCU. Uh, we talk about this process here and how he's working out. We talk about how he's rising up the uh, draft boards, uh, you know, due to his hard work and, and, and what he's hearing from the NBA uh, people as he goes. Before we get into it, though, we ask that you please subscribe to this channel. Go ahead and click the like button on this video. And if you enjoyed the interview, please feel free to share it across your platforms. Um, in the meantime, we want you to leave in the comments who your favorite player is in this NBA draft. Uh, be very excited to hear from you who your favorite player is in this NBA draft. Um, but without further ado, here is Desmond Bain on the Absolute Basketball Experience with Jamie Shaw. What is going on, everybody? It is Jamie Shaw here on the Absolute Basketball Experience. I am here with uh, recent TCU grad Desmond Bain getting ready for the NBA draft. Des, how's it going? Man, it's good. Thank you for having me. No, absolutely. Um, first off, what's on everybody's mind right now, the Jordan documentary that came on last night, Last Dance. I'm sure you watched it. What was your initial thought? Um, I mean, it's crazy, man. You know, I grew up, I was born right when, you know, they were winning all those titles. So, you know, I was just a little, a little guy. And, you know, I obviously watched Jordan highlights and stuff like that, but you never know what, what type of competitor and, and what the organization looked like until you get a behind the scenes view. And I mean, that documentary is big time, man. Can't wait till next Sunday. Oh, no doubt. It, it's kind of one of those things where it lived up to the hype. No you know, question. it's like everybody had going into it and everything. Then all of a sudden it comes out and it's like, dang, that was as good as it, that was as good, maybe even better than I thought it was. <laughs> exactly. Crazy. Um, jumping right into things, um, you know, your senior year at Seton Catholic, you averaged uh, 30 points, 11 and a half rebounds, six assists, three box. You shot 54% from three, you know, standing at 6'5", 200 or so pounds. It was obvious right in front of you how good you were. But why do you think that these schools, the D1s, kind of – Slept on you a little bit. You know, I played at a real small school, graduated with 20 kids. So I think that had a little bit to do with it. I was putting up, you know, good numbers, but they didn't know how how real they were. And and on the on the AAU circuit, I was playing with Indiana Elite, but I was playing with the, the B team. So, um, you know, we're playing a lot of the back gyms, which there's nothing wrong with that. I was getting a lot of exposure and getting a lot of interest from D2 and NAI schools. But, um, you know, ultimately I wanted to play at the highest level and I, you know, went to the top 80 camp and the rest is history. Uh, no doubt. I mean, you came into that camp, I guess, and, and you had already taken a couple of D2 official visits. Yeah. You go through your senior year and you have an unbelievable senior year. Jamie Dixon gets the job at TCU, gives you a call. And, and things happen pretty quickly after that. What was that phone call like and recruitment process like um, for you and TCU? Oh, I mean, I'll never forget it. I mean, I mean, so I played at AU as a senior, played with the, the top in the elite team, played in two live events. Um, and, you know, I was waiting on Purdue, waiting on, you know, Cincinnati or somebody to, you know, pull or give me an offer. And, uh, you know, it didn't come. So I was at one of my homies' crib. I'll never forget it. And I'm driving, driving home, ready to commit to Miami, Ohio. And I pull into the driveway and um, I get a call from Ryan Miller from TCU. Or uh, Actually, Christoph had hit me up and said, TCU has been trying to contact me. Um, mm -hmm. Have I heard anything? And I said, nah, shoot me his number. So I gave him a call. We talked, said they wanted to have me down on an official visit right away. And um, I mean, I went down there and fell in love with it. And, and you come in right away, you know, you, you know, you start two games, games of your career there. Um, freshman season, quarterfinals of the Big 12 championship game, you knock in, knock in free throws against the number one team at the time, Kansas, to give your team the win and all that kind of stuff. Take us through that moment. What was going through your mind, you know, and, and to have all that on your head as, a, you know, as a freshman in that experience? I mean, I, mean, I was kind of too young to really even understand the moment. Um, I mean, you know, I'm playing in front of 16,000 people and, you know, we're playing against the number one team in the country. And to me, it was just, you know, another three free throws. You know, maybe as I'm a junior or a senior and I, you know, actually understand the impact of the game, I, I may, you know, hopefully still hit all three, but you never know how the pressure gets to you. So, you know, I was just, a, you know, a kid out there having fun playing basketball. And I mean, after, after that game, I had, you know, tremendous amounts of confidence and it really carried through to, you know, the rest of that season and, and my sophomore and junior, senior year. Absolutely. And if I would have told you your senior year at Seton Catholic that you would be leaving TCU as their all-time leader in wins, games played, three-pointers made, third all-time in scoring, what would you have told me back? 
I told you it's crazy. Because <laughs> <laughs> I remember having a conversation with you about four and a half years ago, and I was about to commit to Indiana Wesleyan. So, I mean, yeah. you you tell me that. I mean, it, I'd tell you you're crazy. <laughs> Uh, so you finished your career uh, with a school record, 279 three-pointers made at 43% for your career. Uh, however, uniquely, you're comfortable shooting both off the bounce and off the dribble. Uh, where does that confidence, where does that comfort kind of come from in your game? So I, I work with Coach Miller, uh, Ryan Miller, really hard. And obviously his brother Mike Miller played in the NBA and was a great shooter for, you know, many years. So, um, you know, that's how we really spent our summer. And we worked on, you know, shooting off the move. Uh, I could always knock down spot shots and then, you know, shooting off the bounce and, and all types of, of different different moves. So, um, you know, I, after working on it so much, it becomes second nature and it just, you know, translated to the game. So obviously you can only run your own race here, um, but you know, you're in a tough league, you make all big 12 first team. Um, and then you have guys who are on the second team like Tyrese Halliburton and, and Jemias Ramsey, you know, you finish higher than them and the, all that stuff, yet they're projected higher than you possibly in the NBA draft. How does that make you feel or, or what's the process behind uh, the grind that puts that into the chip on the possibly shoulder that that gives you? Yeah, I mean, that's that's the chip that I've had, you know, my entire life. I mean, um, you know, went to Seton and was kind of under-recruited, went to TCU, and TCU's never really been known as a basketball school or had a lot of respect, you know, around the country, and we earned that throughout our time there. But I feel like it's, you know, a similar thing. It's, it's how my path has gone, and, you know, whether – you know, I get drafted or don't get drafted. I just, you know, hope I end up with a with a good opportunity and, you know, I'm able to produce for for hopefully a winning team. And uh, so you tested the waters before and, and you came back. What was the feedback? What was that process like for you last year when you tested the waters and what feedback did you get? So it was it was good. I mean, you know, get to go to all these facilities and, you know, meet with front office people and, you know, just see see where you're at. And, um, you know, they, they told me that they thought I, I shoot the ball well and defend and rebound, which are, you know, things that, that translate to the next level. But they, they want to see me shoot more threes and continue to get better as a, you know, playmaker for myself and for others. And I feel like I did those two things over the course of my senior year. Yeah, and, uh, you know, this past year you averaged four assists per game and your usage rate skyrocketed up from 19 to 24%. Uh, um, you were put in a position, I guess, to make plays and create with the ball. Did kind of the feedback and your talk with the coaches from the NBA guys into that a little bit? And um, how do you feel that it, you did with it? How do you feel that you did with that feedback that you got implementing it into your game your senior year? Yeah, so yeah. I've, I've had interviews with two teams that I worked out with last year and teams that have given me that feedback. And, they, you know, they said that I did what I was supposed to do. Um, you know, I, I, I'm, a, I'm hopefully projecting to the league as a three and D guy, but I want to be able to, you know, attack closeouts and, and still make plays for, for my teammates and for myself. So I feel like I, like I proved I, I can do that. And I feel like they, you know, feel the same way. Your game is incredibly efficient. You know, you have minimal movements. Nothing's very forced. Where does that poise and confidence come from? I mean, I've always kind of played that way. Even, you know, in high school, I've never really been a guy to step out of my comfort zones and, and do something that, that I'm not capable of doing. I just, you know, stick to what I do and um, how I fit into the, the team, the role of the team. And, you know, my first three years at TCU, I was, you know, more of a volume role player, get out, run in transition, knock down open shots. And, you know, my role was different. So I just, you know, try to play the role to the best of my ability. And Throughout this process, obviously, we're in, we're in a quarantine. You can't really get out and take visits and stuff. Your physical makeup is eye-popping. You know, your size, your height, your, your straight-line athleticism and stuff, which would have kind of really helped with the combine situation or, you know, in, in physical work and workouts. Have you recently been tested, and what did you measure at? Um, so, yeah, I was 6'6", I was six, six, um, with my shoes on, um, 216 pounds, I think. Um, and we, we did a few of the combine measures and, and things like that. And I had a 40 inch vertical. Um, I can't remember exactly what the, the short shuttle and the, the lane agility was, but he, he told me I tested well across the board. Oh, no, and, and that's no surprise. That's something that I think that you need to gather in person to really see how physically strong and built you are. Um, going back just a little bit, a little bit, um, you know, your senior year, you, you set school records, you expanded your game and everything. 
What feedback are you currently hearing now from, from the NBA teams? Oh, I mean, I'm, I'm hearing great things. I've had several interviews. I had eight interviews already. Um, I got two more scheduled this week with teams. Um, and, you know, a lot of them like me. Um, you know, it's good to have them call in this early. I think they just came out with the, the Zoom restrictions about a week ago. So it's good that a lot of these teams are interested and they, they feel the same way as me, that I have a skill set, you know, that can translate to the NBA and help a team right away. Without a doubt. What players do you watch in the NBA? Do you study in the NBA? And then secondly, what type of role do you see yourself settling into as an NBA player? So I really watch a lot of guys like um, Joe Harris, Danny Green, um, Eric Gordon. Um, when I was playing in a pick and roll this year, I watched a lot of Malcolm Brogdon. Um, I like the way he, you know, plays with pace and doesn't really let anybody speed him up, um, you know, over the course of the game. So I, I, those are really the, the four main guys that I study. Coming out, you signed with Seth Cohen at SAC Agency. Um, what drew you to him? Uh, what drew you to his agency and, and, and uh, leaning on him as an agent? It was really just relationship. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, with, with an agent, you want somebody that you know is going to work work as hard as they can for you. And um, I felt that with, with Seth and my, my family felt comfortable with Seth. You know, he came to, came to multiple TCU games and, you know, made multiple efforts to, you know, meet my family and get comfortable with them. And I was obviously comfortable with them. So it ended up being the, the best decision for me. So most notably, he took last year Cam Johnson, put him in a lottery pick and all that kind of stuff. While you and Cam aren't physically the same, there's a lot of similarities uh, kind of in your games. And, you know, you're, you're college veterans. You shoot the cover off the ball, um, all that kind of stuff. Um, did that kind of play into it a little bit? Did, you know, did, did what he did with Cam, did you see that? And you're like, hmm, this is interesting. No question. I mean, Cam was projected, I think he told me late, late first round, early second round or something like that. And, you know, they worked their way into a lottery just because of, you know, some of the things he does well. And he's obviously a great kid and a great, great guy. So, I mean, obviously, it, you know, played a, played a bit of a role in my decision. He played for Coach Dixon. So, um, Coach Dixon actually made that reference and said that, you know, we are similar as well. So, um, yeah, I mean, that, that played a bit of a role in it as well. This is an atypical NBA draft in that you're not able to go to combines, you're not able to go individual workouts and stuff, having to rely heavily on Zoom based face kind of stuff. How are you navigating through kind of this system to make sure that these NBA teams are able to still get the best version of you? No question. I mean, I, I just try to relay my professional approach to the game and my professional, you know, approach off the court as well and all the, all the habits that I've created. Um, you know, whether it be eating right or, or sleeping or whatever it may be, um, you know, just trying to, you know, get to know them and then them get to know me. They like they tell me all the time. They, they see me play for four years. They know what I can do on the court. They're just, you know, at this point trying to figure out who I am as a person and, you know, what makes me tick. Absolutely. And, and you're working out down in Miami. Uh, what does a typical day look like for you now? Um, so, yeah, so we're going about 10 to 4. Um, whether it be rehab, recovery, strength, conditioning, um, on the court, we'll we'll hit all that, and then I'll go back and get you know rehab, recovery, and then um, I'll come back and do do my shooting routine that that I do and that you know Coach Miller did with me back at TCU. Mm -hmm. And then uh, so we kind of like to end these things up on a little rapid fire, three quick questions uh, that you give to the to the answers to. Um, what is uh, one incredibly common thing that you have never done before? Mm. Incredibly common thing that I've never done before. Uh, I don't know. Ate sushi. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> In a movie about you, who would be playing you? Who would you have play you? Ooh, probably my boy Shano. He really good with the impersonations. He's a character. And what is one song you could choose that best describes your life? Uh, Love Yours by J. Cole. I mean, it, it talks about the people around you. And uh, you, you probably know all about J. Cole being down there. In North Carolina. North Carolina. But, yeah, that's, that's probably the song. That's awesome. Uh, wrapping up here, is there any last thing that you would like to say to, any, uh, to TCU fans that may be watching, NBA, NBA execs that may be watching, anything that you'd like to close up with? Yeah, so yes. I'm, obviously, obviously thank you to, to TCU and 
um, you know, the Horn Frog family for, you know, welcoming me in and, and giving me an opportunity when nobody really wanted to. And, you know, to any NBA teams out there, you know, um, you're getting a professional on and off the court. Um, you know, I'm looking forward to the next chapter and, and ready to work wherever it may be. Absolutely. I have no doubt. Des, it's been awesome to watch your progression coming from high school, what you did at TCU, and I have no doubt I'm going to be watching for many years professionally down the road. Uh, thank you very much for joining us here. Thank you, my man. I appreciate it. No, absolutely. And, uh, and good luck moving forward. Uh, for Desmond Bain, I'm Jamie Shaw here on the Absolute Basketball Experience. Thank you guys very much for tuning in. And there you have it. Desmond Bain on the Absolute Basketball Experience. What a great story he has going from where he came from in high school, continued to bet on himself, and now he's got a chance to get drafted in the NBA draft. Uh, great story. Thank you very much, Desmond, for coming on. If you have not already, please be sure to go ahead and subscribe to this channel and like this video. If you enjoyed the interview, please also feel free to share it across your platforms um, so that more people can see and hear about Desmond. And also in the comments, we want to hear who your favorite person is and who your favorite player is in this 2020 NBA draft coming up. But until next time, I am Jamie Shaw with the Absolute Basketball Experience. Thank you, Desmond Bain, and we will see you soon.